Hi, everybody. Welcome to TCM Time Live. That's traditional Chinese medicine with me, Kathy Young. Welcome to my 20 minute uh, introduction for Tai Chi Sword. This is the Tai Chi Sword sequence. And we're looking to feel what's called the one third point. What you'll find, we'll learn about the different sections of the sword from the first third that's stronger and you can use it to block. The second third, which you can slide. And the last third, learning how to cut. So today the focus is on the one third pivot point. This allows your sword to move smoothly and gracefully. So we'll learn just basic drills, what's called this is the horizontal pull, just going left and right, and pivoting around the one third point. And we can do something called left circle and twist from the side, looks like this. This is like a tip over hourglass, and you're pivoting again to feel that one third point. And last, if we have time, we're going to add in a little bit more application. Feeling the one third point, you're going to block up, pivot around the one third and chop down. Good. So if you have at home, you don't need an actual sword. This here is a wooden sword. You can use also a metal sword if you don't have a sword at home, you can use, and my favorite is an umbrella. Nice long umbrella, you can still learn to feel that pivot point and chop. So if you don't have an umbrella, see if you can have, find a stick, just any old branch. The whole point is learning how to pivot and any stick can work even something as small as a chopstick. Small as a chopstick or a spoon, wooden spoon. So if you remember in the movie Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, there's a point where the master uses just one stick against the sword. And it's all you need against a weapon to block and chop. Good. So take a moment, see if you can find something in your house, something you can use as a sword. Even a paper towel roll can work. So I'll give you a minute. And if you have like a chair or something at home, see if you can find a chair, something you can use to feel a little resistance. So that way it'll give you a sense of that resistance when you're cutting through an object. So I'll give you a minute and anybody else who's already here, just feel free to warm up, say hello in the group, in the live chat, and then we'll start in a minute. So I saw we have Thomas, hello Thomas. We have Ed, hey Ed. Chioko, hi Chioko, the pug. We have Veronica. Veronica from Argentina, and Ernesto from Panama. Hi, Ernesto. Very nice that you're here. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Yay. Yes, I am in the shadows today because of the time I'm in California. It's 8 o'clock in the morning, so the sun has not completely risen yet. So I'm sorry that it's a little dark, but as we warm up, hopefully the sun will also brighten as we cut through the darkness. Yay. Hope you can see me. Good. So let's grab a drink of water. Hi, Andy from Seattle. Okay. Good, everybody. So let's begin. First thing what we'll learn is something called the Tai Chi secret sword. If you can hold your fingers using your thumb, push down on your ring finger and your pinky, like you're making bunny ears or a peace sign. 
and just hold that index finger and middle finger together. This here is called secret sword and it's always balancing your sword hand. So if the sword hand, most times when we practice, we'll practice with the right hand dominant, but in the practice drills, you can also alternate with your left hand. So here, if I go cut across, my secret sword balances the weight and the power. So you can open up from squeeze and open. If I'm stinging, if I go straight forward, I also push my secret sword straight back. Good, and if I chop, if I block up and I chop, I can use my secret sword to support the weight. If a big sword is coming down at me, I push up my hand, secret sword support. And as I chop, secret sword pushes down adding the power and the speed. Good. So let me see your left hand, secret sword. Good, and then aim, see if you can aim it connected with your third eye, that's between your eyebrows, and connect it with that focus. Let's take three deep breaths, inhale, Sink the chest, exhale, focus. Inhale, exhale. Very good, let's go three more times. You can watch in the side view. All I'm doing is holding it by my chest, my heart level, aligning it with my third eye between the eyebrows. Inhale, holding the sword up, secret sword. Exhale, extend. Inhale. Exhale. Very good, we're going to change to the other hand. If you're holding your sword, you can switch it to your left hand and practice secret sword. This is part of what's called Tai Chi sword, Qi Gong. Qi Gong, Qi is your energy, Gong is your cultivation and work. So putting in that work to let the energy flow. So here, let's try again, breathing. Inhale, align with your third eye and focus. Exhale. Do it one more time. Three times from the side. Inhale, sink your chest. Imagine you're protecting your body. Exhale, extend. One more time, inhale. Focus and exhale. Very good. So that's the internal side of Tai Chi sword. So as we go through the movement, as we bring in the sword in the right hand, we're going to continue breathing and leading the energy all the way so you can feel every inch of the sword. So let's put the sword in the right hand and you want to gently Wrap it around with your thumb and your index finger. 
And you want to slide it all the way, hugging the handle of the sword, the hand guard. Good. So anytime your hand separates from the hand guard, this leaves an opening for your sword to get cut. And in battle, you would lose your weapon. So it's a good habit to always let it slide back up to the hand guard. Good. So you want to grip it with your other three fingers, middle, ring, and pinky finger. And this, these fingers can be flexible. You can grab it wrap, wrapping all your hands around, your fingers around. This can give you power. This gives you power and stability. See if you can hug it tight with all your fingers and chop. From above, like you're chopping a helmet, chopping wood, straight down. Good, and your secret sword is adding in on top, on your forearm, here, just a little bit away from your wrist, and feel this pressure, your left hand, adding the weight. As you chop down, you're adding the weight. Boom. Good, and try to feel the flexibility from your wrist going from the vertical angle all the way to the horizontal. Good, so that's part of feeling the grip when your fingers are all around. You can also release the last three fingers and this gives you speed and flexibility. See if you can feel the weight of the sword just between your thumb and your index finger. And let the other three fingers be nice and loose, nice and soft. Good. So slowly, we're going to go into what's called the horizontal pull. We want to grip the sword as if you're holding an egg. So firm, but not so hard that you crack the egg. So we're going to feel what's called the one-third pivot point. If you look at your sword, and if you have a stick, just divide it into three parts. From the handle, hand guard, one-third, and the second third and the last third. In ancient times, the sword, the balance, the pivot point, the balance of the sword, a good sword is on the one third point. This gives you a very wide range of motion and less stagnation. See if you can put your finger under the one third point and see if you can just change all angles of the sword, but always pivoting at the one third. So I'm turning like a windmill. Good, so feeling the first dirt, this is the thickest part of your sword. And that's the strongest part against another weapon. When it makes contact, it's very strong and it can take an impact the second third, this is more finer, and this is for sliding. Once you make contact, you slide for the second third. Good, and the last third from, from the, all the way to the tip, this is the sharpest part of your sword. And this one you want to reserve as few moment as possible for the cut, because once your sword makes cut to opponent's body, the sword can rust. So you want to save it for really when you have the right target. So here we have block, slide, and cut. Good. 
Good. If you have another stick at home, what you can feel is the first third, lock, slide, and cut. If you don't have another sword, just try to feel your mind at the one third point, lock, slide, and cut. Very good. We're going to start beginning the first exercise. This here is called horizontal pull. And it has a feeling like you're pulling on a rope or pulling on a stick. So you're going to have your palm up on the sword hand. And you're going to grip it with all fingers, but the last three fingers, the middle finger, ring finger, and pinky are nice and soft. See if you can feel, just like when we did vertically, but now you go nice and loose horizontally. Good, so you're always going to keep the sword always in front of your body. See if you can align it with your nose and your belly button. So anytime you're moving your hand away from your body, this becomes just the power from your only your arm. And this is less connected, less rooted. So see if you can align your sword Always your sword in front of your body, in front of your nose and your belly button. Very good. We're going to start feeling that pivot point from the one third. You're going to pull, when you pull to your left, See the angle, the tip of the sword is to my right. Once I reach the end, I pivot at the one third and I pull to the other side. Imagine somebody's at my tip and I'm pulling it and I'm pulling, turning my body and pivot at the one third, finish. Tip is behind you, feel the angle and pivot at the one third. I'll show you back view first so you can get used to the angles. So once you reach the sides, imagine somebody's pulling on your tip and you're using your body to pull it to the other side. And then again, pull from the tip. from the side view. Front view. Very good. Slowly, you can allow your body to go a little faster. When you go faster, you'll see the tip just going back and forth, left and right. Your handle is also going left and right, and it's pivoting at the one third point. So see this, it becomes body, left and right. See if you can turn your waist, left and right. And keep the sword again, always in front of your nose and your belly button. And go up and down. Very good, and continue. 
See if you can slow it down if you need it and go fast if you need to. The goal is to extend your mind all the way inch by inch to the tip. From your handle, feel it. Feel the one third point, pivot, and bring your mind to the tip. Very good, very nice. You're starting to feel the movement of the sword. The feeling you want when you're training is like if you had an actual whip in your hand. The whip is soft, it's hard, and it goes along the whole line, only tensing at the one small point. The sword is the same. It has a feeling kind of like a whip. Tai Chi is all the powers like a whip. So you want to feel the tension slightly, follow all the way until you reach the tip. So if you can see, without the one third point, what you see is my whole sword moves together. There's no curve, there's no tension along the line. I start adding the one third point. I feel that point is the point of resistance here and out here and out. Good. So that's horizontal pull. We're going to change the angle. So again, you can still feel that one third point. One thing you can do at home, if you have a rubber band or a tape, you can mark that one third point. If you can bring all the way and at least with some marker, this gives you an idea. When you have a marker that can help you to focus. So here we're going to still pivot around the one third point. We're going to try what's called left circle and twist. So this one, your handle is going to go counterclockwise. And the tip of your sword will also go counterclockwise. Like a tipped over hourglass. And pivoting at the one third point. Palm is up. And secret sword supports to feel the weight. So if I break it down from the back view, you can see if I lift up my handle, my tip goes down. If I pivot at the one third, my handle goes to the left, my tip goes to the right. If I drop my handle, my tip goes up. And last, if my handle goes to the right, my tip goes to the left. See if you can get the tip and the handle in opposite direction, pivoting at the one third point. Side view. Front view.
Good. Let that tip, let your focus go all the way to the tip and move. Good. So the whole exercise, see if you can also support it with your secret sword, the left hand. This is the same as if you were holding a stick. And usually when you want to stabilize, you add the secret sword. And that helps you to control better, to bring your mind all the way to the tip. So I can put secret sword can slide anywhere along the arm. And this helps to steady each movement. If I go single hand without secret sword, there's less stability. When I add in the secret sword, it's connected to my body and more stabilized. Good. Shake out your arm. Relax. We're going to change it up again. So these are three different exercises, all to let you feel that one-third pivot point. It's good to change exercises after five minutes or so, because this can allow your muscles to relax and try different muscles for the sword. Later on, when you want to condition your body, you can stay for longer with one exercise. So here, let's relax. We're going to go to the last exercise. So the last one is a block and a chop. When you block, your handle is going to be over your head. The one third point is over your nose and the tip slightly angled down. When somebody sword chops over my head, that allows the sword to slide off the sword, my sword, and away from my body. Here, you're going to bring your handle forward as your tip goes back, pivoting at the one third point, and chop down, straight down over the head. And lift up the handle again. Handle over your head, tip lower, secret, the one third point over your head. And you can push up your left hand to push up your with your secret sword. Turn your body, handle in front, align so it's vertical, and chop from over your head. Secret sword comes on top, and chop down. Block. Chop. Continue on the side view. From the back view.
You'll see I push up with my secret sword to help lift up my arm. And then my secret sword comes over my arm, my right arm, to add the pressure downward. So this exercise has more martial application. If I have a sword against sword, if you have a partner at home, this is something you can do with each other. Where you block, the other person's sword is coming over your head. You pivot and you chop on their head. They block and they cut. It's hard to do it just single hand, but idea is block over your head, slide away. You're parallel to their sword, and then you cut down. Block and cut. So you can see the whole purpose of this pivot, the one-third pivot point. If I struggle here, it's, it's more force against force. Tai Chi is all about finding and pivoting around a center point, so it doesn't have to use force, and it can neutralize and set up for the attack. Good. So these are three exercises that give you an idea how to find the one-third pivot point. The, one, the first one is the horizontal pull. And you're always imagining you're pulling the sword. You're moving in a V shape from one side, tip to the other. And as you pull, you're feeling that one-third pivot point keeping the sword horizontally, keeping the sword in front of your nose and your belly button. Turning your body and adding in secret sword. For people who know this movement, what you're looking for is also the Tai Chi Pong, arcing of the body. Later on, you can practice high and low, side, and other side. Learning always to pivot still at the one third. The goal of this one, make sure your mind goes all the way to the tip and not just on the handle. Second exercise is called left circle and twist, having a counterclockwise circle with your handle and your sword tip from the back view still pivoting around the one-third point, like in tipped over hourglass. Still keeping the sword in front of my nose and my belly button to stay connected with my body. This is a very good movement in Tai Chi Sword to neutralize and then attack, to neutralize, coil, and attack. Good, so the, that's the left circle and twist, the second exercise. You want to lift slowly, use your shoulders and your hips. So rather than my arms using all the motion, you're using your body. And this is something we practice in martial arts and Kung Fu as well, called triangle body, turning the shoulders, turning the hips to make a triangle, shoulder and your feet. The last exercise is a good exercise for a partner drill, practicing just blocking at the one third pivot point over your head, tip down, handle up, Pivoting at the one third point till it's parallel with the person's sword and then chop down. Block and chop. Good. So that's the pivot point the one third pivot point. And all the while you're using secret sword to help stabilize and add power or speed. So today, don't worry if it, you haven't caught on to the movement. 
Remember the Tai Chi sword, sword in general, this is the most advanced weapon. So sometimes it takes time before you build the foundation. And then when you have the foundation, like the body turning, the alignment and the focus, the Tai Chi Pong structure and secret sword, once you have the fundamental, it will be easier to move and to focus, to feel the sword. There's a traditional Chinese proverb that says, it takes 100 days for bare hands to practice bare hands. So all the bare hand sequences can take 100 days to master. The spear, it takes 1,000 days. The spear is a stick with just a tip that's sharp, a long weapon. With sword, it takes 10,000 days, 10,000 days to master. So for most of you, today is your day one. And if you can keep practicing and try to feel, try to have a sense of opponent and sense of protection, you will be on your way to those 10,000 days. So to wrap up, I just want to show you a little bit other exercises, part of the Tai Chi sword sequence. First, I just want to show if you have a chair at home, if you don't have a partner, what you can do with a chair is this gives you a sense of resistance. If I'm practicing, if my mind is on the handle, I cannot penetrate through the chair. But if I bring my power and my mind and the weight all the way to the tip, if I bring it to the tip, I'm cutting through the actual chair. But if my mind is on my handle, it doesn't cut through. So it's all about the focus of your mind. Good. So that gives me a resistance from above. It can also give me a resistance for horizontal pull from the side. See if I can move the chair even. Other side. Good. So here, this gives you that resistance so that you're not only moving from the handle. Last part, I'm gonna show you a little of the Tai Chi sword sequence that we're working on. The sequence gives you all different techniques to practice the movement. So here, I'll just do a few movements, a little bit more slower. Up to there. From here, we're working on the last few movements, stabbing behind and jumping. Good. And you'll see this is a practice you can do to feel again the one third point. Good. So thank you everybody for joining me for Tai Chi Sword. This is greeting from your heart, secret sword right hand, and your sword chambered behind you. That means I'm not going to fight you. I'm great. Good. So if you're interested to continue learning sword, I have live Zoom classes. This way, if you're in the Zoom, I can see you and give you more feedback and correction. So if you want to join, just be sure to register. Um, we start next and in two weeks. Good. So now I'm gonna open up for a few questions and just say hello to everybody. So thank you so much, everybody. And again, sorry about the lighting. Hope you can see me. 
Hi, Teresa. Park, glad you're here. Hey, Ed. Good. You learn something new every day. Big hug. Thanks, Ed. Hi, Veronica. Thank you so much. I'm glad you found the explanations clear. Good. Um, say hello. Good. Thank you, everybody. Tai Chi sword or sword in general is one of my favorites. Sword I learned directly from my father. Um, this is one of my best memories. Good. I see my uncle and aunt are here. Thank you, Andy Stewart. Day one of 10,000 for sure. Just keep checking off those barks, boxes. Tally, tally the days. Good. Thank you, Ed. Glad you think I look good during the form so much. Good, so we'll do it just another minute, see if you have any questions. If you're interested, tomorrow is another free class. YouTube Live, same time. I'll look for a brighter place to do the form, but this is going to be the white crane form, white crane bridge hand. We're gonna practice two punches and two blocks. Simply two punches, two blocks. Solar plexus, face, Cover, cover. Good. And then the fall classes will start from October 6th. Good, everybody. Two peace signs. Stay peaceful and keep shining with your light. So thank you again for joining me. Till next time, this is TCM time. Keep letting your house shine. Thank you, everybody. Big hug. Yay. Thanks for joining me. Veronica, you have a question? Nope. Okay. Good. Feel free if you have questions, just leave it in the comments below and I'll get I'll try my best to get to to reply to it. Or you can email me or send a message on my website, pcmtime.com. Yay. Thanks again, everybody. So glad you can be here with me early morning or from wherever you are. Hopefully it's not too early. Good, everybody. See you. See you. Hope to see you in class or tomorrow. Bye. Oh, so